Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can set up animations for your character inside of Unity 2022. So if I go ahead and hit play, you can see I can already move around the screen with what I set up in my previous video. So let's actually set up the animations now. First I'm going to jump into the prefab for the character by clicking on the little arrow next to the game object in the scene. Uh, if you don't have that arrow, then it's probably because you haven't dragged your prefab into your actual project. So in the prefab, we can make changes that will apply to every instance of this game object across our game. So we're going to add a component now, and you're going to look for the animator component. So add that to your character, and then we need a new runtime animator controller. So in the folder where I have the character game object scripts and anything else I want to store in there, I'm going to right click, go to create, and let's look down for animation controller. And then let's look down for animator controller. So I'm going to call it AC for animator controller, and then just player. Now click on the player object again and drag the animator controller component into the controller over here. So right now we don't have any animations to go with this animator controller. So let's go to window animation and let's open up the animation window. So for right now, I'll just drag this down here to the bottom. You can put it wherever you want. So to create our animations, let's open up window, animation, and then the animation window. For now, I will pull this over next to tile palette and the inspector, and there'll be this button here to create a animation clip for the player object. So I'm gonna hit create. We'll need to put this in a folder. I'll use the same one where the animator controller is stored. So let's go ahead and call the first animation idle down as a anim type. Hit save. So we'll have this keyframe graph over here. So in Unity, we animate by changing properties at specific time intervals. So for instance, one of those properties, if we hit add property, could be the sprite on the sprite renderer. So if you open up sprite renderer, and then we go down to sprite and hit add, then this will be a property which we can change. I can also click on the drop down to see the sprite at this particular frame in time. So if I hit play, we'll see this animation playing, but nothing really is changing because there's only one sprite. So I'm going to go to frame 30 out of 60 here, so half a second. And let's add in a new sprite from our animation. So I'm going to click on my art assets pack, go to gatherer. And then right here is the frames for the idle animation. So whichever pack you're using will usually have their own way of organizing how your sprites are split up. You just need to find the sprites that are associated with the animation you're trying to use. So here I'll just drag the second frame and I'll put it here at frame 30 for this animation. Go to frame zero, hit play, and we'll be able to see our character animating. So how this is working is it's just changing the sprite which is showing at the specified point in time. So if you wanted it to play quicker, you could just drag the sprite over to frame 15, this one at the end back to frame 30, and then that will change the ending frame for our animation, hit play. Okay, and then you basically have the animation playing at double the speed. So I'll control Z that a couple times to keep it at the initial base speed. So let's create the other animations. So I'll click on the drop down, create new clip, idle, right, save, and let's go ahead and grab these frames. So I'll just drag the frame straight onto the node graph. And you'll see that this immediately recognizes that we're trying to change the sprite on the gather player game object. So I'll just drag another frame over here where I want it to change frame 30. And I can copy this frame by selecting it, control C, go to one second in, control V, paste it in. And there we have our idle right animation. So I'll create idle up as well. Let's just drag the first frame, the second frame to frame 30. Copy the first one to round one second in, hit play, and uh, there we go. Now I can see that a animation change here needs to play for at least one frame of animation. So to get the timing right, it might actually make sense to pull this to 59 which will stop the animation at one second and then go back here to the start. So I'll just change that for all of them. So frame 59, there we have our idle up. So for the walk animations, basically gonna be the same thing. Let's create new clips. I'll do walk down and let's pull in all of these at once. So I'll just drag them on here and then I can hit play, but that's gonna be way ridiculously fast. So let's drag them out to where I need them to be. So I got six animation frames. I'll just put them at 10 frame intervals. And then so that we don't cut this animation off early, I'll control C, control paste it into frame 59, which will end the animation at one second and then go straight to the first frame. So here we have 
our walk cycle animation, but it's a little bit slow. So I'll cut the time in half by dragging everything back to five frame intervals. And then this one at 29, hit play. And that's more like the proper walk speed. So let's do it for the other clips as well. Create new clip, walk right. I'll grab these into there, space them out. Frame 25, frame 20, frame 15, 10, 5. And then duplicate this one over to frame 29 so the animation ends at 30 frames. And then we have our walk right animation. So lastly, you need to create the walk up animation. So walk up. And then let's go ahead and grab that in there. And then once again, copy pasting that last frame so that it ends at frame 30. Okay. And there we have a walk animation. So I'll just go ahead and add in the swing animations as well. So swing right. These three, drag them in there. I'll space them out at five frame intervals. So this one's going to be pasted at frame 14. And let's do swing down. So select the frames, drag them in, space them out. I'm going to do five frame intervals and then copy this one so that it's a 15 second animation. So let's go with that. And then swing up is the final animation. Let's go ahead and drag these in, space them out, copy the last one, and make sure they all have an equal time for their animations to play. So that's how you can set up all of your sprite based animations for your character. As of right now, you won't be able to switch between them in game. In my next video, I'm going to be showing you how to basically avoid this kind of animation web, where when you have too many different animations, different states effectively that you need to go between using the built in system, which you can see in uh, window animation animator, you can see all the animations here, if you need to connect them all, then you can end up with the web like this, which is a complete mess. So in the next video, I'm going to be showing how you can actually switch between your different animations using code, rather than having to build a nasty looking web here, which could just get really confusing. So we'll be effectively creating a state machine in code, which in the long run may be an easier way to manage your character. So that's going to be it for this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching to the end. And I will see all of you in my future video content.